the splendor of the King, though in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice, He wraps Himself in life, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at His
angel said to Abraham, Look up at the stars in the sky and count them. You are telling us, Look at me and my greatness and be lifted up from the darkness and the despair of your life. It's a pretty simple formula. Look at me, the Lord says. Look to me and be saved. Look to me and be transformed. Look to me, for I am doing a new thing in your life. And because God is doing this great new thing this morning, shall we give the Lord a hand as we say, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. For the final time, how great is our God. Brothers and sisters. So today we start with the book of Jonah. So you want to find out who the Jonah is. <laughs> Jonah 3 verse 1. Jonah chapter 3 verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. So uh, it's a good time to remember that our God is the God of the second chance. Jonah failed the first time and he refused to respond to God, but God came to him. Uh, second time. So, always there is a chance with God. And that's the good news we start with this morning. The God of the second chance so I have said this earlier. If you look at the, if you look at the New Testament, Peter is the man of the second chance. If you look at, if you look at Paul, Paul is the man of the second chance. He's the second life that was built. And you will see in history Saint Augustine, the person of the second chance. Saint Francis, person of the second chance. So God seems to do something better with the second one than the first. So we always have a 
great opportunity. God is waiting to give us a second chance. So don't look down, look up. Count the stars. So you will see stars sometimes, but count the stars. So I remember this joke about Jonah, we must tell you that, and, you know. And uh, because the little child uh, was speaking about how Jonah was three days in the stomach of the whale. And then the teacher said, according to scientific uh, findings, uh, a whale cannot swallow a human being. And therefore, uh, that story is not true. So the t child said, no, it is true. Uh, but then the teacher got annoyed and said, no, it's not true. So then the child said, when I go to heaven, I will ask from Jonah how whether it was true or not. So then the teacher was annoyed. The teacher said, what if Jonah is in hell? Then the child said, then you can ask him. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> next verse verse 2 go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give so what happened was uh, it's a pretty simple story after that Jonah went and proclaimed the, the word of God and said you are going to be destroyed if you continue the way you do. The people accepted the word and repented and God did not send the calamity on their people. So a very simple straightforward story. You know Jonah Tell, speaks the word of God and people listen and then they repent and God turns a curse into a blessing. But the gospel is not so simple. We we'll look at the gospel because the message is in the gospel today. And Luke eleven twenty nine. I think Jonah ge katawa gudak saralai. Jonava Isella Akamati Divasivare Baling Ekata Adalagatta Adalagattama Devian Mansi Illapudi Kiwa Kiwama Minisu Manastaba Una. So Jonah was not happy, but the people were happy. Jonah's story we can look at at another time because when people repented, Jonah was not really happy. So there's a problem in the human nature. So we look at uh, Luke 11, 29. As the crowds increased, <coughs> Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Now you have Jonah in the New Testament as well. What is the sign of Jonah? And many people believe the sign of Jonah is three days in the ground. Three days in the whale, three days in the ground is the sign of Jonah. Uh, that is, uh, Jesus will die and be risen. But the problem here is <coughs> not about the sign. It's about asking for the sign. Uh, and that's what we need to really look at this morning. Look at the next verse. For as Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites, so also will be the son of man to this generation. Look at the next verse. The queen of the south will rise at the judgment with the men of this generation 
and condemned them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now one greater than Solomon is here. Prasniti in me, Jonah Gananemi, Prasniti in me, Lakunu Ganai. The people ask Jesus for a sign. But though they asked him for a sign, they were not ready to accept that sign. Jesu Jesu gain lakuna kiluata attatama lakuna piligana kamati unene. Why is that? And what does it mean for you and for me? The simple reason that they could not accept the background of Jesus. Jesuge Pasubima Piliganda Badinisai. What do you mean? They looked at him. And when they looked at him, he was not qualified according to their understanding to be a prophet of God. He was he had no he was not qualified. Because if you have to be a priest, you had to be from the house of Levi. So he was not from the house of Levi. And he was not even wearing jeans. And so, 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 so and, and the second, he was not a Pharisee who had the background to say, I had studied under such and such a person and I am qualified. So, St. Paul had that qualification. St. Paul said, I have studied under Gamaliel and, and therefore, you know, uh, I have the qualification. Uh, the third thing is that uh, he was not a, a, a Sadducee, you know, or a, or a scribe. He didn't have any of the accepted backgrounds that the people had accepted as religious. So therefore, he was an ordinary man. It's amazing. If you, if you study the titles of Jesus Christ, you know, there's a subject in theology called Christology. You know, Christology is uh, the study of the person of Christ and his names. Uh, one of the names that Jesus called himself is the son of man. Very interesting, those who study this title tell us that the meaning of the word son of man is ordinary man. So Jesus emphasized that he was an ordinary man. Now that is what the people did not like. Why didn't they like it? It's a very interesting thing to find out. Because secretly it has something to do with us. What does it mean? When the Mrs. Jones is becoming bigger than her thumb, <laughs> Mrs. Pereira can't go to sleep. <laughs> Why is that? Because... Mrs. Jones is exposing an inadequacy in Mrs. Pereira. Then only the tongue wags and the running down of the people begin. Are you following what I'm saying? It is creating inside others a sense of inadequacy. Why didn't God use me Surely I am better than so and so. Why didn't this happen through me? Not only in religion. You see this in professional life. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> you know, you see, we nice laughing, you know, actors, they must be having enough 
you know, actors have ego. <laughs> so, so you'll see. What happens is, somebody else's becoming big is a big issue for you. Because you feel inadequate and small. And then you hate them for it. You know the strange thing. We can see it so in so many others. When I'm telling you, you can see it, no? But the problem is, we can't see it in our own selves. That's the blind spot of our life. So, if you are condemning somebody, running down somebody, criticizing somebody, and you hate their guts, <laughs> it's good to find out <laughs> whether there is this problem inside our own hearts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is it clear what I'm saying? Can you understand? You know, I used to play chess with an uncle of mine uh, when I was in my late teens, you know. He and I used to have a drink together and we used to play chess. And whenever he lost, he got damn wild. <laughs> You know, so wild, so wild. One day his wife asked him, you know, why are you getting so angry when you lose? He said, you know, he blurted out, because when you're angry only, you dare to tell the truth. <laughs> so, a lot of people dare to tell the truth only when they are angry, otherwise you don't have the courage. So, so uh, he blurted out, I am sure I am more intelligent than this fool. <laughs> and, 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 he, and he's so annoyed, you know, I lost to this fool, you know. So, and hidden inside us is this problem. And that's why Jesus said, no sign will be given to you because no sign would be enough. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No sign is enough because there is a prejudice hidden inside the heart. And when you have a prejudice, when you have an inadequacy covered up, when you are dealing with a jealousy, and jealousy is a strange thing. Why is that? Because uh, everybody else has it, but I don't. <laughs> Ask yourself and see. You know, you know, you can give it another nicer word. You know, I'm hurt. <laughs> you know, hurt seems much nicer than being jealous. I feel bad. <laughs> you know, I feel bad not only for myself. I give, I give it a noble thought. I am feel bad for the others. That's why I said that because I want to defend everybody. I am not jealous. She. <laughs> so, 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 why are we jealous? Because we say feel the place that we should have, somebody else has taken. The position we should have, somebody else has taken. The honor we should have, somebody else has taken. And we resent that in our hearts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So today, when we repent, it's a good thing to repent of the hard-heartedness that every one of us carries. And Psalm 51 says it beautifully. Psalm David says, don't take away the Holy Spirit. Because if you carry that in your heart, the person you lose is the Holy Spirit. And many people are not led by the Holy Spirit because the self and the ego are number one. So my brothers and sisters, a crisis is good for us. A rejection is good for us. An attack is good for us because it invites us to humble ourselves under the hand of God. And when we humble ourselves under the hand of God, 
we open ourselves to the inner journey and the inner life. So today is a good day to clean up our inside by doing what? Against all the other people in your life. Don't justify resentment. Don't justify anger. Don't justify running down other people. You may have a pretty good reason. Because your whole heart is agreeing with it. Because you may be rejecting Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus told the Pharisees. They said, he said, you are mourning the prophets. You are mourning the prophets of old. Saying, we would never have done this to them. But you are killing the prophets of your own time. Easily they did it. Because poor people, they didn't know what was happening inside them. And we can become like that. So I found out in my own life, if I am too angry with people, <laughs> if I am too caught up in what people are doing and I become agitated inside about what they are doing, it's a sign that there is something that needs to change within me. If we pity people who are doing that, that's a sign that we have become free. You know, if we really pray for them that they have, they have become like that, it's a sign of being free. But if we are angry and resentful and reactive with strong words inside and outside, it is time to read Psalm 51 quietly and give our own heart to God. So it's a good time. Quietly read Psalm 51. You know, and in a time of crisis, I remember 10, 12, 13 years ago, I read Psalm 51 for three months every single day because I wanted to be sure that my contribution to that crisis will be repented for and changed. And actually, God changed it into a mighty blessing. So we can read Psalm 51 for other people. You know, and really repent for them. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't read it for your wife. Don't read it for your husband. Don't read it for the Joneses. <laughs> Don't read it for others. Read it for yourself. Don't take away the Holy Spirit from me. Any sa suicide say, Abda Katakarani, Apea Tulanta, Akalpea Ganai. Jesu Kenova, Ubata Lakunak Dinni Namam. I lakunak dinne nette, lakunak dunna ta vedak ne, atta ta ma hoyanne lakunak neve. Hoyanne karunak hoyanava, tamange mataya tahavuru karagan. Eni sa, dena hama lakunama vigraha karanni, ego langi mataya tahavuru karagan. Eni sa, jesuke nava, eni sa tamai. Obata Deviange Handa Hid Nati Kriava Penene Nati. It will not suffer Matakaranoa, E Capitanita to the lacy and penoa, Meatema, Yariatema, and it cannot tema, Evna to not suffer Matakarani, Uba to lat, Ma to lat, Oya Dema Sidwena, Eco Hoyagan Dona, Coma the Hoyagani, Gita Valia, Panas Eker, Api Venu and Mayatna. Keragan, e namaskari atule me satya adhekima keragan. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So let's pray Psalm 51 this morning.
Psalm 51 verse 1. Just breathe in whole. Breathe out whole. 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 Let us start by remembering that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Romans 8 verse 36 says, No height, no depth, no created thing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So when I come to repentance, I come with the assurance that my God loves me in my weakness. My God loves me in my sinfulness. Breathe in, hold. Breathe out, hold. It is his love that is drawing me into his heart to repent. It is his love that, that is creating me in me the desire for change. His love wants to make me a better person, a liberated person. I breathe in and hold, breathe out and hold. Say the words after me. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. So David himself understood unfailing love of God. Even when we have failed, he remains steadfast and invites us to his presence. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. So Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit can really take away the poison inside of me. And that's my desire this morning. I want the poison of my resentments and anger and jealousy and reactions to be cleansed by Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit. Verse 2 Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Just breathe in whole, breathe out whole, breathe in whole, breathe out. Today it is different. I am not seeking a relationship with God. I am not seeking His love because I already have it. I have His love. But I am seeking a freedom from Him that I may be the person He wants me to be. So when I say, wash me from all my iniquity, I'm asking him, 
do something inside me that I may change and become the person that you want me to be. You already love me. You already seek me. I want to be changed by your love this morning. And cleanse me from my sin. The, the nature that ties me down deep inside. The chains that hold me. This anger that rises up. This jealousy and resentment that comes out. This kind of woundedness that makes me think evil of others. The lust within that emerges. That makes me see other people as mere objects of my pleasure. The Lord who is loving me is offering me a chance. So I'm telling the Lord, here, cleanse me from inside so that I may become the person you want me to be. Verse 3. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is always before me. So this morning, I accept my sinfulness. I don't play any games with God. I don't justify my position today, this morning. But I simply say, I have weakness, I have frailty, I have this unbalanced life and nature that makes me behave and think and feel so wrong. So I'm bringing this to my God this morning. So that he may change me from deep inside. This is the great good news. I don't have to hide my sin. I don't have to make it more acceptable than it is. Because the Lord loves me in it, deep inside. But I want to be transformed. I want to be liberated of this thing that really holds me down. Verse 4. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge so this morning I accept that my sin ultimately is against God by being against people, by being against others, I have done against God himself. Number one, God's love is so deep that God is abandoned and lonely in the worst enemy of my life. And whenever I reject my enemy, I am also rejecting my God. Because Jesus has died and has risen for that person. And Jesus, who is living in the entire universe, is actually living in my worst enemy. And loving that person rejecting that person doing bad and evil to that person is going against the Lord himself so this morning let us acknowledge that let us see that in every person have rejected have been antagonistic towards and against I have actually rejected God and whenever I open myself to others, even though they are frail and weak and sometimes sinful and selfish, I am opening myself to God himself. Next word. 
Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Let's simply accept the fact that by natural tendencies I don't have deep goodness inside. I have the tendency to sin, tendency to be selfish, a tendency to react, a tendency to grab, a tendency to think primarily about myself. And I need God's intervention for this to change. So I open myself to his love this morning. I allow him to minister to me, realizing that sin is running deep inside of me. So therefore, it is not a case of my trying to change my behavior alone, but the sinfulness inside of me. The Lord is loving me deeply enough to touch it if I open my heart. Verse 6 Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the innermost place. And that's what the Lord is doing this morning. The truth of our hearts is the sinfulness deeply ingrained generation upon generation and the Lord says you don't have to defend yourself you don't have to excuse yourself all you need to do is to open yourself to my love and forgiveness and then I will reach into that core that place where it is hidden and I will transform you from inside so there is a lot of hope inside me. Because as I accept my sin, that hidden sin inside of me, the Lord is going to do a miracle. He is going to take a sinner and transform into a saint. Not by our acts, but by his activity inside of me. Can you experience it just now? Breathe in, hold. Breathe out, hold. Breathe in, hold. Breathe out, hold. His love is flowing. You don't have to, you don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to explain yourself. You just receive that love and forgiveness. And the Savior's power inside you. Isn't that great good news? Any nature can be changed. Any, any sinfulness broken. Any power that grips us transformed. The Lord says, only don't play games. Don't justify. Don't make wrong right. To hold on to it. Just allow my presence to fill you. Verse 7. Cleanse me with hyssop. And I will be clean. Wash me. And I will be whiter than snow. When the Lord reaches into us with his precious blood. We will be changed. Not just forgiven of the past. But the good news is. That the Holy Spirit. Brings the nature of Jesus. Into us. And not only are we. Liberated from the past. But in the present. We are given. The new nature. Of Christ. So we can carry his heart. His mind, his nature, his personality inside us. 
So that St. Paul could tell the Corinthians, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. The old is gone, the new has come. So this morning, I allow this truth to filter into my heart, deeply, softly, moving in my life. And I say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 10. Verse 10. Create in me a pure heart. Look at that word. It's not there. It's not coming from my nature. It will never come from my background. But God can create a new heart. A pure one, not prejudiced, not jealous, not angry, not broken, not hanging around with all these hang-ups. The Lord creates the new heart. Create in me a new pure heart. O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And when we give the truth of our hearts, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit building a new nature, the nature of Christ inside us. Do not cast, verse 11, do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. David saw what happened to Saul, the predecessor, who lost the Holy Spirit and was led by an evil spirit. And he cries out and says, Do not take away my the Holy Spirit. So we ask the Lord this morning, because of our foolishness, don't leave us. Let your Holy Spirit renew me and lead me today. Verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Can you imagine? It's a great gift from God. A willing spirit, a new heart, a new leading, not from my will and my effort but as a gift from God this morning. A willing spirit that will walk with God in a new way. Jesus is creating this inside of me today. Shall we say thank you Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you Father. Thank you Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. So you can read Psalm 51 with a lot of hope. With a lot of expectation. God reconciling, restoring, transforming and putting his Holy Spirit in a new way in your life and my life. Shall we stand and be in the presence of Jesus? You can sing the song of Psalm 51. Sing that tonight. So when you pray today, pray Psalm 51 quietly in your one hour before the Lord.
is going to reach and put me in a place much higher than I could go on my own. He's going to bring a perfection that never can be attained by my own help by my own strength and because he's already sent the Holy Spirit to do that in us all we have to do is to look at the sky and open our hearts to his words and these things will become true in your life 
and mine and because the Lord is doing that already shall we give the Lord a mighty hand today and say thank you Lord hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus glory to your name worship you Lord hallelujah 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 glory to your name worship you Lord the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Remember, don't let the birds take the seed from your heart. Carry it precious and safe inside. God bless you.